Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. In our last episode, we talked about how the cronies managed to get the Marijuana Tax Act passed in October of 1937. And for a period there for about five years, anyone that wanted to trade in the hemp industry or handle cannabis or anything like that had to purchase this dollar transfer fee. Of course, the problem about that was they expected you when you showed up to get the transfer tax stamp that you had to have the hemp or or marijuana with you. And so pretty much you were in trouble when you walked up to the door to get the stamp. So, and of course, none of the stamps were ever issued either. They, uh, it was just sort of a joke uh, by our, our senators and our crooked Congress to allow something like this to go on. But amazingly, five years later in 1942, when the Japanese during World War II, they, they seized all of the uh, Philippine um, hemp in Manila, the uh, supply of hemp and twine there in Manila in the Philippines. And if this put quite a shortage on the uh, amount of rope and necessary things that the United States government needed to fight the war. So amazingly, we had the hemp for victory come about. And our United States government spent around $300 million to build 42 hemp processing plants. Uh, each of these cost around $350,000 to build, and they had to train 170 people to work and, and operate and manage the different mills that they put together. They hired experts that, that had already been growing hemp for many, many years, so they, they had some good, good people working on it all. And uh, their first uh, plan was to grow about 50,000 acres of hemp in Kentucky, and this was going to produce the seed that uh, they would later plant in Wisconsin, <coughs> Iowa, uh, and several other states around the Union. And uh, their, their main goal was to plant 500, up, up to 500,000 acres of, of hemp altogether, and, uh, which they did. And, uh, but this was a very short-lived affair. It, uh, by 1944, the war was starting to wane, and the, uh, the hemp production started to come into a close, as far as the government saw it, because they went out of the hemp business. They started selling their 42 factories. They sold most of them to private enterprise and at a fraction of the cost that they were, that they had into them. Uh, but the hemp production was going pretty good though and they did get up to about 350,000 acres of total production. Now they, an average yield on the hemp stalks uh, per acre was around two to two and a half tons. And the government was paying the farmers about 50 to $65 a ton uh, for the hemp. Each, uh, each acre would produce probably around 1,100 pounds of fiber. And so there, this was quite, a ma quite an amount of uh, cordage that was going in the industry. And, and they really got it down to a fine art on how to process it and make the ropes and the different uh, things that the cordage was used for. Uh, unfortunately, after the war ended and the, the hemp supply was stable from around the world, the, uh, there was an excess, an excess amount here in the United States. So the, the government had to spend more money. They had to keep the price stable so the hemp market wouldn't collapse around the world. And so they offered, uh, they kept this price line steady through that whole period. And finally in 1948, our government uh, made their last uh, payments for hemp purchases from American farmers. Although the, uh, they ended it then, uh, the hemp production still continued for about six more years, six or seven more years, uh, quite pretty good crops. There were several that failed. Uh, uh, hemp is one of those things in the fall when you harvest it and all, you have to go through a redding process, which allows the fibers to separate from the stalks. And if you have uh, the wrong kind of weather conditions, it can absolutely ruin a crop that you've grown all through the summer and spring. So uh, weather plays an important role because most of that was redded in the outdoors. So when, this, when these inclement weathers, when the weather wasn't just right, some of the crops failed, and that was the case in these. But overall, they had fairly good success with it. Uh, the, the, the thing that surprises me, though, they knew then how much hemp they were producing and how much cordage it was producing, and the net worth that was around the world. It just seemed like to me that that would have been the eye-opener for them to say, hey, wait a minute, this is an industry we really don't need to let go of. But unfortunately, we did. And uh, as things progressed through the, uh, through the next few years, people, all that was going on with the hemp and the marijuana business was people going to jail for it. And uh, in our next episode, we're going to pick right up at 19, in 1960, just a few years prior to the Controlled Substance Act that Nixon managed to put together. 
and we're going to talk about mainly about the number of people being arrested and how the shift in narcotics arrests in the United States went from hardcore narcotic use like heroin, heroin addicts, and it shifted to a much younger group and most of the arrests were from marijuana and this is just absolutely absurd.